Hello and welcome to our program all about holiday plants with the Urban Garden Center. My name is Amanda and we're Turnstile Tours. Um, so in just a few minutes, we're going to bring on uh, Dimitri Gatanas. Uh, he is the owner and operator of the Urban Garden Center. Um, this is a family run organization that's been here uh, for three generations in a couple of different locations um, in Upper Manhattan. Uh, they're located now uh, at the La Marqueta, uh, which is in um, East Harlem, and is uh, they're located at 116th Street um, and Park Avenue. They occupy a very noisy two block stretch underneath the railroad tracks. Uh, they've got no running water, no power, no electricity. Um, so uh, rather, they rely a lot on, on natural light. Um, so let's bring on Dimitri to tell us a little bit about what it's like running a family business in New York City um, and how much different the, the um, store is gonna look from when we were back there in the spring with all of their lovely holiday plants and decorations. Hello, Dimitri, you? can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? We can, but we can't see you. How about now? There you are. Uh, Hello. Hey. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, for those of uh, for those visitors, uh, viewers who, who weren't here in the spring um, when we had visited you the last time, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the about your company and about your family background uh, in the gardening business in New York? Sure, sure. Well, we're a family-run operation, as you just said, and um, it, it, it all started back in 1959 when my grandfather started a flower shop on 89th Street in Madison, and um, he sort of evolved little by little over the years into an actual garden center, which is um, basically a, um, a flower shop on steroids, if you will. It's um, an out, outdoor plants, indoor plants, garden supplies, um, pretty much anything you would think you need to, to operate, maintain, create a garden in New York City, we carry those products. The one thing we don't carry, which is what we started with, was the cut flowers. We carry no cut flowers whatsoever, but we do things like uh, holiday arrangements that are done with pots and uh, plants and things that have roots, uh, orchids, things like that. Um, and, and you're, you're uh, the number one supplier in the city, is that correct? Well, of course we are. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what we're we're, we're going to let you know that, and we're going to do our best to uh, support that moniker. Um, and just to get back to your background a little bit, now you were you were originally in the in the real estate field, is that correct? Oh, that's correct. Yep, yep. I um I got involved in this business because my family was trying to purchase some land from the city of New York back in the uh, '80s, and um, I um, I was just getting out of college, and I was in the real estate business, real estate financing business. And um, I told my family, oh, look, I'll help you out. And uh, we were successful in helping them out, which brought me here because they needed somebody to run the business. And I agreed to come on for two weeks and two weeks turned into uh, six months. And now uh, it's over 20 years. So um, I've um, I'm happily and proudly uh, been involved and uh, it's been the best experience of my life. And I hope it to, to continue that way. Um, and exactly how old is the business? It's nearly 60 years now. Is that is that Correct. right? Yeah, we are 60 years, 60 years as a, as a family run garden center in New York City. Uh, now, the last time we visited you, um, it was very springy and, and it still looks like you, you have a lot of those plants. But I was going to ask when uh, a garden center your size that's as packed with the type of um, you know, merchandise and, and things that you have there, uh, what do you do when you bring in all of the seasonal holiday plants? Where do where do the other plants go? Do you just stuff everything in? Well, yeah, that's one thing we do. We do we do a lot of sales in the August and September and October. We hope to unload that way. Um, it also gives us an opportunity to sort of give back to our customers because you know they they put up with uh, uh, with us for the whole year uh, in spring and what have you, especially this year with long lines and and uh, uh, you know all the all the all the obstacles dealing, uh, running a business during COVID. So we, we gave them like probably about six, seven weekends of, uh, of sales, which are great, which was great, but it didn't stop us from bringing new plants. And so what's happened is we decided to rent the greenhouse in uh, New Jersey uh, to bring all the uh, overload over there and um, also help us uh, support the, the uh, growing online business that has become an integral part of our, of our operation. Um, um, something that was by design, but, but, COVID really sort of um, solidified that. And so, I mean, in, in a, you're really, you're kind of a multi-tiered 
um, really, because it's not just a, a shop where you're bringing plants into you. You're storing the plants off site. You're maintaining the plants off site. What members do you have associated with with um, the Urban Garden Center? Well, I mean, so what happened? So, so I guess the question is, um, how do we deal with all the, all these multiple tiers? Yeah, I mean, it's really it's very difficult. Um, we we work a lot of hours. I mean, I work seven days a week right now. I get up at 4.30, I work until about nine o'clock and um, I'm exhausted, I'm not gonna lie to you. But it's, um, I, I, I just, um, I see the, the, the vision and, and actually COVID has actually allowed us to see the vision and, and see the future even more clearly. So um, I, I decided that the, the struggle is worth it. The, the, you know, being in this business online is really important to us. Um, so if it's a, a little bit of extra cost of uh, maintaining plants offsite, I think it's completely worth it, um, and and we and we have other ideas in uh, in the in the works um, to really expand the business and to expand the brand of the business and expand the the experience um, that 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 we hear from our customers is a good experience, and we try our best to keep it that way. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, turn you to holiday plants since that's kind of what everybody's here to to hear about and talk about. First off, where where do all of your holiday plants come from? So the word holiday plants. I mean, um, I'm, I'm I'm guessing most of it is like let's say like like poinsettias and zygo cactus, aka Christmas cactus, uh, paper white bulbs. The paper white bulbs actually come from um, Holland. Um, and they're delivered to um, um, a distributor in upstate New York. And we Do buy you have them. any that you can show us of what paper white sure. bulbs are? Yeah. I'm going to pop you over this way. So yeah. they come from Holland. Is that, is that like the bulbs come from Holland what, and then they're five. grown in upstate, you said? Well, they're not grown. Um, they're just actually literally, they come from Holland and come right to us. I mean, oh, so, right. they, so you have paper white bulbs in bloom right now, which are um, in the Narcissus family, which is also like the daffodil family. And um, um, and it's a it's a plant that you start from a bulb. You can see it down here. We we plant the bulbs in in various containers, and then they grow beautifully. Usually right around Thanksgiving. So if you start them like let's say end of October, they'll be ready for think for Thanksgiving. People are starting them now for Christmas. And we have how, more. How long does a plant like that last? You know, it's about a month, month and a half. I would say that's a, but you know, the more, the cooler it is, the longer it'll last. So we're fortunate to have, uh, to keep it a little cool here during the day, but in your home, it might be a little sooner. It might be a little faster. Um, and then we have, so the bulbs are also bulbs that we plant for our clients as well. So we have a, a large supply that we keep in storage in the back in the cool weather. Do you have uh, an that, actual bulb that you can show us? Sure, yeah. Yeah, these are, um, these are tulip bulbs. And uh, here you are. So this is what a tulip bulb will look like. Okay. And uh, this we plant now in the um, in the in the customers' gardens, and um, we uh, plant them about six inches deep, and um, and we hope for the best. But usually uh, nature does its work for us, and uh, we're always uh, lucky enough to have them grow grow beautifully come uh, April May. Uh, and just a reminder to everybody: if you have any questions. Um, you, you want anything, you want to know anything from Dimitri, how to maintain your holiday plants or advice about holiday plants or anything else, um, feel free to, to type that into the chat and we're, we're happy to answer um, any questions that you have. Um, so you showed us some, you called them white paper bulbs, is that what they're called? Well, they're called paper whites um, and they're, like I said, they're in the daffodil family and that's what I showed you grown. I'm going to show you now, I'm going to show you something called an amaryllis bulb. An amaryllis bulb is beautiful. As a bulb, as you can see, it's huge, it's really large, and it grows into this gorgeous, prolific flower. And it's usually either red or, or white, sometimes an orange color, but this is a really popular plant. Um, and um, I could tell you that it's, um, uh, it's something that we also give as gifts from our garden center to some of our clients who've been uh, very good to us. We, we send them out of amaryllis bulb planted and we hope that uh, they think of us for the three months that we're out of sight and out of mind. So it's a reminder. Uh, usually... We have a question from John here and this actually sure. might be a good one for the amaryllis. Um, what would your suggestion be for a surprise holiday plant to give as a gift? Well, I mean, 
obviously there's the the basics you know like the poinsettias there's the uh the paper white bulb uh there's the, the amaryllis because those are really popular um but people do things like let's say um bonsai you know for instance like bonsai like this you know things like that and then you have things like this clivia which is really wonderful because it flowers rarely flowers so it's in bloom right now that's really popular but then you have things like like this European cypress, like it looks great in a, in a pot. You have things like um, anthurium, which is a red flower, so people like that. And then we also have these really, really super cute mini poinsettias. I mean, literally two and a half inches in a pot. It's cute as, as anything, goes in a small little tiny pot. Can really work on any anybody's uh, uh, table or uh, you know any small space. Uh, but then, of course, we have orchids, really popular. We have um, things like these um, uh, bromeliads here. But, you know, the, the gift, the, the form of a gift is changing now because there's a lot of plant lovers out there. And now they're, they're buying things like, let's say, micans, philodendron micans, for instance, or hoya. Uh, these hoya are wonderful. So I can tell you that the, the plant varieties have changed or this Pilea peppermoroides, which is uh, known as the Chinese money or the Chinese coin plant. So the, the form of gifts have changed. Things like an, an olive topiary is real popular now. Or these one kind of moving away here. from red flowers and onto kind of plants that have meaning. Yeah, well, you know, there's a, there's a thing, look, the red, the red thing came from the red poinsettia, which was which was discovered by, and I don't want to use the word discovered. He just he just saw it for the first time. John Poinsett was the ambassador to Mexico back in the 1800s, and he saw these gorgeous poinsettias in the summertime in front of a church, and they were and they have a religious meaning to them. So so sometimes uh, in the world that we live in today, not everybody wants to have the religious connotation to a plant. And the red has sort of somehow, you know, become that. But so people want white poinsettias instead or pink poinsettias. So we have them, you know, we have white poinsettias like this, you know, which are gorgeous, you know, and um, that's pretty sort of like, you know, pretty neutral as far as that's concerned. But today the gift is, is evolving. I mean, we used to sell a lot more uh, Christmas cactus, but we don't sell those as much anymore. Um, and you can see What's them a here. Christmas cactus? Yeah, like these right here. The, the proper name is called zygo cactus. They're known as Christmas cactus because they generally set a flower sometime around Christmas, but we find that they go into bloom really around Thanksgiving. And um, what ends up happening is uh, what's, what's important about that cactus is, is, is if you bring it to the cooler weather, like in September, and October and you keep it by the window, you keep it near, like, don't let it freeze, but like, keep it in the cold weather. It sets the flower faster. And then it, it ends up becoming a flower once it's brought inside or like into the warmer weather by Thanksgiving or Christmas. So it's a pretty cool plant. Uh, but again, that's like becoming like uh, old fashioned. So now people want the, uh, the cool, hot, new uh, plant, like, uh, like the Skindapsis, you know, something like this, you know, this is what people want these days or this variegated uh, uh, ficus uh, uh, plant. This is what uh, people are looking for. So we have everything, we have everything ready. There's even, this thing is sort of making a comeback, is the Norfolk Island pine. Looks like a little tree, but it's really a tropical plant. Looks like a little Christmas tree. This is popular. I could see why that would be pop popular in the city too, because if you can't get a tree, it, it kind of has a Christmas feel to it. Exactly, exactly. That's really what it comes down to. But I mean, like I said, it's a, you know, in the old days when we, when we, let's say we were a flower shop, all you would see in here would be paper whites, amaryllis, and poinsettias. You know, today we have to offer things for all kinds of tastes and 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 um, you know, um, uh, you know, everybody has different preferences, and we want to support that and 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 expand on that. So we we've decided to really stack the greenhouse up or stock the greenhouse up with with lots of other things and it's uh, paying off. I love the white poinsettias. I don't know that I've ever seen white poinsettias before. Are those, are those less common than the, I mean, are they harder to get than the red ones? You know, I have to say they're very popular. 
they're um, the decorators love them because they, they look great inside of an apartment. Sometimes red can clash with other reds, you know. So the uh, white is really a wonderful option because you can really, um, you know, you can really brighten up a room. You get the, the the spirit of the holidays in in the in the house or in the restaurant or whatever, and it, and it matches pretty much anything, right? So it's like a it's a wonderful choice. But, We've got you know, a question like, here. Um, from Ursula, actually, about poinsettias from Ursula in Austria. Um, she says, I've always thought the poinsettia plants are very sensitive to low temperatures. How do you manage that they survive in the open air market? You know, that's a, a, a very important question. Um, they are. They, the irony of this plant is that it really is sensitive to any conditions below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and um, we um, do our best to keep them covered. If you notice, all my poinsettias that that are here, most of them are covered. And um, and there's also a, a, a risk in keeping them covered too long. So the trick is to get them, keep them warm and sell them <laughs> and uh, hope for the best. But yes, yeah, she's, she's, Ursula is correct. The, um, the plant is very, very temperamental. So if I sold you a poinsettia today and it's let's say 40 degrees or 35 degrees out and you don't have it covered, there's a good chance the following morning you're going to find it drooping because it really got affected by the cold. And this is a common problem, uh, more so than any other problem with a poinsettia. It, it's, it's a lot less sensitive to underwatering. It's, it's very sensitive to cool air. So drafty windows, drafty doors that open and close often. These are spaces that you want to try to avoid keeping the poinsettia. If you're having an event, which you're probably not this, this, this year, but if you were having guests over, and you had it in one of those vulnerable positions, put it there for the temp, you know, temporarily and keep in mind that it needs to be back in a warm spot. So Ursula is right on with regard to low temps. And we've got another question um, asking, how can I get last year's poinsettia to grow red leaves this year? Seems to be a little trick to that. Um, what, I, what I've been told, and I've, I've tried and I've, I've been unsuccessful, but what I've been told is you want to keep the plant green, of course, it stays green for the for the uh, time after um, the holidays, it, it starts losing its color. And then you wanna sort of get it into some kind of like lower light conditions, keep it dark for a couple months, not, not totally dark, but really away from light. And it helps set what they call the bracts, which is really what the flower is, which is the poinsettia flower. So this is the bract right here. It starts setting a bract when it goes from the low light condition to the higher light condition. Um, most of our growers start these these plants sometime in August, and it takes those three months to get them going. So they, they, um, uh, but they, but to keep a, the plant alive all year, it's very important that it goes through sort of like a dark period, is what I'm told. I, I haven't tried it uh, successfully. I have to be frank with you, um, and it's something that I think uh, uh, a lot of people try to do, but a lot of people don't like to see it all year. <laughs> it reminds them of Christmas too much, I suppose. Um, now, for people who are not familiar with this space, just to orient them a bit, um, are you in a greenhouse right now? Is this the greenhouse part of the of the um, structure? Yes, it is. We're in the greenhouse. So um, the greenhouse is uh, located towards, uh, it's right along Park Avenue, closer to 116th Street. And um, I can walk you guys um, along if you're ready and show you the rest of the facility. But basically, yes. this, this facility is available to the public all year round. Even during COVID uh, restrictions, we have a, a limit of three people per, per, you know, per visit in the greenhouse. And um, by the way, here's our air plants, which is another great gift uh, 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 option. And uh, they come with like wonderful uh, little gadgetry. You could put like little light bulbs. You could put them in little uh, uh, teardrop glass bowls. But now we're going to head outside. Do air plants take any maintenance at all? Do you have to do anything to air plants to keep them alive? You know, we water them uh, by by dumping them in water, like like literally smothering them with water for about 15, 20 minutes, and then we spritz them, and that's really the big maintenance. Not, not much more to do. So I see some trees. Oh, are those Christmas trees in the background? Uh, hold on one second. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Hold on a second. What was that? Oh, that's better. Your sound is a bit funny for a moment. Um, are we looking at Christmas trees? What are we looking at here? Oh, right now I'm just showing you guys the soil bar. So a lot of our customers don't have space and they need like just a little package of something. So we sell all these rocks and stones and mulch. We sell it all by the cup. 
and um, it's pretty neat. So even during the holidays, it really comes in handy. Um, so now, but things like, by the way, we still sell herbs all year round. We still sell herbs. And uh, it's become even more popular since COVID. We even have a, 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 a rosemary and a, and a topiary farm. And then um, we're heading over towards the Christmas trees now. We saw I love that soil trees. bar. That was so cool, Dimitri. Yeah, my grandfather started the idea and we just sort of expanded on it. So we also sell, so we have live trees, which are dwarf Alberta spruces. And these are real popular in window boxes this time of year, small container plantings. So how many um, different, are there many different types of Christmas trees? How many different types of Christmas trees do you stock? Well, right now we only sell two. It's the um, balsam fir, which comes out of Quebec. And it's the um, a blue morin fir, which is a new plant to us, a new tree. It's a hybrid. And it, it smells like a balsam, but looks like a, like a Fraser fir, which used to be a very popular plant. And now it's um, it's becoming extinct. It's endangered. So we um, so we don't we don't sell the Fraser fir anymore. But like in because the west, farming is that it, it, the tree itself is becoming endangered. Correct. Yeah. Well, there's two things that happened. I mean, there was a big um, they stopped planting those trees back in 2007, 2000. Well, around 2008, 2009 during the financial disaster, and then they. Um, they uh, here's some winterberry, and then they um, uh, they didn't have any last year. None. There was a shortage, and as a result of this, what ended up happening was the government decided to make a make call it an endangered species. So this is a beautiful. But look at this cone. That's unbelievable. Um, so they um, now can you just a, would would you mind repeating the two types of, of Christmas trees that you have for us? Yeah. So it's balsam fir, balsam fir, which is um, um, from the uh, Tug Hill Plateau area of New York and, and Quebec. So we get these actually from Canada. And then there's something called the Blue Morin fir, Blue Morin, M-O-R-I-N. It's some kind of hybrid that the Canadians uh, came up with. And they, um, um, uh, they made it smell like a balsam, but look like a Fraser fir. So it has a bluish silvery foliage, but it has a gorgeous thicker branching and also the smell is just like a beautiful uh, balsam. By the way, we also sell things this time of year like heather, which is, look how beautiful these little flowers are, right for window boxes, Galtheria, so winter greens they're called, little mini evergreens. These are all used in little window boxes. And we also sell things like um, hellebores, which flower during the winter. And here you go, here's a hellebore flower. So, they flower outside during the winter or just yep. inside? Outside. All this stuff is outside. So we have a collection of these plants because people want to keep their pots fresh, looking beautiful outside. Um, and then you'll notice, again, a lot of these branches, which we use for decoration, adds height. It makes it look, uh, makes everything look beautiful. Here are the wreaths. All the wreaths are made with balsam. Balsam. Do you fur. make the wreaths? We, you know what? No, we don't. We actually, we, we only decorate them. We do have a wreath machine, a, a, wreath, a, a thing that makes wreaths, but it's um, something that we break out on the weekends and then we basically create like a little uh, miniature wreath for people, but it's very- We have a, a question for you. Sure. Uh, do you always get the trees from the same farm? Yes, we have been getting, so the, the main delivery of trees has been coming from the same family up in, um, up in Quebec. And we're very, uh, very loyal to them. But we do supplement our trees in from Nova Scotia, upstate New York. Um, and, and, but, but, and again, the same families. We don't really just like just purchase anywhere. But it's, um, we, we do get our main deliveries from one family, the Morin family up in Quebec. Oh, Here's wow. Our, that's a big wreath. <laughs> yeah. So this is how we decorate them. And this is going get, to get a great big bow that uh, my brother Alex uh, puts together. He learned the uh, art of making a bow from my mother. And uh, here's the crew making a big giant uh, wreath. And this will be in Midtown Manhattan uh, in a few hours. Is that for an office building or, or something like yes, that? It is. Yes, yeah, for an office building lobby in a beautiful office building in um, Columbus Circle. 
Do you do a lot of um, those types of spaces, retail and office spaces and things? No, I wouldn't say a lot. I would say that we, we try our best to um, keep all of our customers happy, but the, there's a trend towards fake um, wreaths and fake trees for indoors. So um, uh, we've decided uh, not to get into that business. Um, and it's a, it's a really very specialized business. And uh, so we, we don't have that much of that, but we have a lot of homes, a lot of homes that we, we supply and restaurants and, 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 and spaces like that. Um, we have a comment here from Howard who says that we just brought a Fraser fur. Um, I have me wondering if it was really a Blue Morin. <laughs> so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're still think. selling Fraser furs. There's still farms that are allowed to farm them, but you're not allowed to pick them from the wild anymore. And um, and the other thing is, uh, uh, there's less and less farms available. So endangered is one thing, and scarce is another. So they're both. Uh, now we do have a photo of you getting a delivery of of some of your. We just bring that up quickly. Um, now, how long? Do you know how long from the time the trees are are kind of? Taken to the time that you get them, is is there a kind of a tight window of when the trees have to be brought to you? Yeah, it, it could be it could be up to two weeks. It depends on um on the, the the trees that are being cut. But like for instance, I have another like so I I try to get them only if they've been cut within two weeks. We're not concerned about it. Here's a beautiful uh, balsam fir, and it if you could smell this, you would be wow, it's gorgeous. But it's, Do you um, have um, any way of showing us what a side by side would look like of the the balsam versus the morin? Yeah, let me see if I can do that. Let me see if I can do that. Um, but basically, the, um, uh, the the trees coming from Nova Scotia are being cut for us right this moment. We usually supplement. We usually get our later loads in from uh, Nova Scotia. Hey, hey, gentlemen, can I get a blue morin opened up and a, and a balsam? But basically what happens is we take these trees, they're already pre-wrapped, and then we take the trees, unwrap them, show the customer, shake out all the uh, loose needles. And then um, now he's opening up a balsam fir right now. What's that? Oh, no, this is a blue morin. Sorry. This is a blue morin fir. What's the busiest week for purchasing Christmas trees? Is it what this weekend? Uh, yeah, is, there, gonna... is there a busiest weekend for purchasing trees? I have to tell you, we've we've been we've been selling trees for 15 days now. We've sold we sold about uh, 250 trees before Thanksgiving, all online, and then we um, we sold a, a record amount of trees this past weekend, which was amazing, and uh, it was approximately uh, 100 trees per day. But then it's you know it 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 it, it tapers off during the week. So it's really Saturday and Sunday. It's really, really busy. We, um, I know a lot of people have been talking a lot about with the with the pandemic and everything that people are kind of wanting Christmas early this year just to feel good. And um, but even in past years, I know everybody's been saying it gets earlier and earlier every year. Uh, being in the business, do you find that to be the case that people are buying trees and Christmas decorations earlier every year? I can't believe how early it's getting. I mean, it's just. Uh, I mean, we used to be. On Thanksgiving, that was the like the earliest we'd ever see a tree was on Thanksgiving. Now we see them uh, a week and a half before sometimes. And this year was a week and a half ahead. So now he's gonna he's gonna open up a, a blue morn fir. So he's gonna he's gonna violently <laughs> <laughs> shake it out, and it's part of the uh, part of the excitement. The, the kids get to see the tree. So now you'll notice that this tree is more rigid it didn't open up and 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 feel like it can you open up a balsam tree now and and so what happens is that that's the fraser part of this tree so the fraser's tend to have more of a, um, a tougher branches they can handle more decorations things like that this will open up to about right here uh when it gets warm inside the apartment so it, it's going to get almost looking double the size but if you look at the foliage you see how the needles are there's a blueness to the needles. There's a, a silvery blueness to the needles. And that's the Fraser side of it. But if you're smelling this tree right now, you're gonna smell a tree that, that smells just like a balsam. So this would be very aromatic in the house at the moment. Um, and speaking of, of kind of changing shape as it warms up, I know one of the biggest challenges living in a New York City apartment for us was always 
uh, keeping the tree from drying out with the dry heat in the apartment and uh, you know, not the greatest watering skills on our end. Um, can you give us any tips on keeping your trees looking fresh or keeping them from drying out or shedding and everything? Sure. So here's the balsam opening up. So you see it opens up a lot wider, faster. You see it looks a little bit more um, loose. This is a beautiful balsam fir. So you were giving us tips about a fresh cut on the bottom of the tree. Yeah, so this is a, this is a very important process. You can see the bottom looks a little caked up with, um, with sap and, and things like that. So what we try to do is give it a fresh cut. We don't try, we actually give it a fresh cut about a, a half an inch, gets taken off the bottom right here. And we, the goal is to get that tree back inside water by um, uh, within three hours. And then once it gets into the home, you really need to check it for the first 72 hours, check it often because the tree is really drinking a lot. The tree is really gonna suck up water. And <clears throat> the trick is all these uh, supplements and coins that people put in there and aspirin and things like that that I hear people putting in there, um, these things really don't work. It, it, it's the real trick is to you know to keep the water in the in the bucket in the in the in the uh, stand. That's very important. And then once you keep the water in the stand, and you let it go down below that cut that we made, it will have a hard time sucking the water back up. So it's very important to keep water. That's it. That's the trick. There's no other trick to it. Um. <clears throat> We've got another question here from John uh, saying that I dug up my hibiscus uh, inside and I've got him under a grow light and I'm checking his dampness. What else should I do to keep him happy? His name is Ricardo. Okay, so you had a hibiscus, you dug it up and now you're, uh, you just- Now he wants to keep it? him going inside. Yeah, so um, if it's the tropical hibiscus, then you did all the right things. It's gonna want some light. You need to give it like, um, uh, medium light to, to high light, keep it warm. It likes the warm air, you know, warm conditions and uh, just keep watering it. It should start reblooming again. Um, so there you have it. Ricardo should, um, should hopefully start blooming again once he gets <laughs> a little bit of inside therapy. Uh, so also, um, Dimitri, we've got some slides that we can show uh, just to give people a break from the moving screen. Um, if you want to turn it back to you, we can talk about uh, what some of these pictures are. Yeah. Can you see the Can you see the pictures, Dimitri? Yes, I do. I see the pictures. Great. Um, so, what are we looking at here? <laughs> well, this is the front of the garden center. Um, this was a um, celebration we did with Uptown Grand Central for uh, Small Business Saturday, and it was um, it was done a year ago. There's my dad uh, showing a wreath. That's one of the handmade wreaths that we make. And that's, uh, that's one of them. <laughs> so you do make some of your wreaths? Yes, we do. Yeah, we, like I said, on the weekends, we do like a little wreath waking workshop. Um, it depends on how busy it is. If it gets really like right now with COVID, I'm really reluctant to do it only because of the, because um, of all the uh, concerns uh, about having people be too close to each other. So we haven't done that yet this year. Not sure we're gonna do it this year. Uh, and, and speaking of making things from from tree scraps like like wreaths, uh, there was a we had a photograph. I think we can kind of scan over to it of a tree that was made by some of your neighbors from from some cuttings. Oh yes, yes, yes. It's um. Uh, it was a little there. It is. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So there's a, a former employee of ours that um uh used to take the scraps from the floor, and um he uh, he's he's now retired but he uh, takes the scraps, gets a little uh, piece of wood and makes it look like a tree. So it's a real uh, recyclable tree. <laughs> it's beautiful. He puts lights on it as well. Um, now you had mentioned when we were talking about what do you do with the spring plants? Um, what do you do with, with all of the holiday plants when the holidays are over? Where do all of the trees go and the poinsettias and the... So the um, holiday plants, we don't, we, we really, we, we try to sell them off really. Um, and that's what we do. So we buy just enough. I mean, the, the, the purchasing is real, um, real important. Um, the purchasing and the timing and everything like that. We tried to buy just enough based on, on demand only and based on orders. And we keep a few extra. So we try to have very little waste at the end of the season. 
Um, and kind of talking about waste, I know you, your company and your, your, uh, your shop is very dedicated uh, to environmentally friendly practices and, and you run compost workshops and all kinds of things. Um, what are there additional challenges when you're talking about holiday plants and things that have to be brought in and, and aren't necessarily um, going to be fully consumed? Or are there additional environmental challenges with holiday plants? I mean, you know, obviously, you know, people think that it's uh, wasteful to see all these trees cut down and the branches, but actually they're doing the forest a, a, a service, actually. So most trees are grown in farms and they've been designated to be cut, grown, and, and, and basically all of our growers are doing anywhere between three and five new trees per tree cut. Um, and um, that's important because uh, that, that obviously helps the environment. We're not just like, you know, clear cutting a, a, a big field. But like where we get our trees from, they grow wild out there. It's pretty amazing. I mean, they, they're literally like, there's tens of thousands of balsam fir trees just growing right in the woods there. It's pretty amazing. So we're really, it's part of the ecology of the, of the, of the, of the environment there. So that's why I like about that. The Fraser fir has been overplanted, overgrown, oversold. Now there's less of it. So it's hard to find cuttings and, and, and things to take from nature to replicate those trees, which is uh, why I think the government decided to, um, to put a put a halt on on growing those again, um, but you know we we we're, we're not going to do this if it's going to be environmentally uh, uh, you know dangerous or anything like that or you know risking the environment just to sell some trees. So it's definitely not something we want to do. Um, and there's just one more question about the trees, uh, and then I wanted to ask you briefly about something else before we before we call it a day. Um, so people want to order the trees online. How does that work? Can you order a Christmas tree online? Do you yes, you may. Yeah. Or do you deliver? Yeah, so we have a really easy process. I mean, most of a lot of our sales are done online now. So you just go to shopugc.com, but you can go to our regular website, urbangardennyc.com. And um, you go right to the website. You choose the tree you want. You choose the size. You have the option of adding a stand. You have the option of adding a white glove delivery, a curbside delivery, a tree setup. And um, it's very simple. And it's, um, you know, we get the order and within seconds and then pretty much within three days, you have your tree. In some cases, people get it the same day. Is that just, is that just New York and the surrounding boroughs or do you deliver outside of the city? Right now, I would say most of our orders have been Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx. Um, I haven't done any, anything to Staten Island, but I mean, so that's pretty much it. But I mean, like I'm selling a lot of firewood right now. I mean, I can't believe how much firewood we sold and a lot of firewood is ending up in Brooklyn right now, but, we, we have a, I mean, a, a, a whole history of selling firewood. So that's paired with the trees. So it's kind of funny. Somebody might be ordering their tree and then ordering firewood as well, or things like that. Or somebody might order soil in their tree. So people are taking advantage of the fact that we're doing this online ordering and also adding other, other products to the, to the sales. But most of our sales are Manhattan and Brooklyn. And what are your, what are your hours currently? We are open to the public from 10 to eight every day. And uh, that'll continue until the end of the and by about uh, December twenty second. Um, and this uh, slide that that just popped up there for a moment. Um, last time we talked to you, you know, I know so many businesses and and everybody's been so hard hit by the the COVID uh, nineteen pandemic. And and when we had talked to you, you had said that in a certain way it'd been a bit of a boost. Um, in your business because so many people were home and gardening and starting new hobbies. Um, how, how are you guys doing today? Are you finding that that's been, been able to be maintained? You know that nothing's really changed. The only great thing is that we've been able to throw our services back into the uh, mix. Um, we were basically um, not able to do that between March and most of April. And uh, we've been doing that and it's been quite hectic and, and busy. Um, so we're happy about that. The lines that we had and all that stuff that was going on during the spring, that's settled down. There's not none of that going on anymore. But I, I can't complain. If I if I if I complain, I'd be uh, really uh, uh, not being truthful to you. But um, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is also like we're working with restaurants. We're trying to help them. We're trying to find the most cost-effective op opportunity for them to put put some kind of decoration uh, or decorating together, and um, and that goes for all of our clients, both you know, big institutional clients to, um, you know, regular small little cafe. We're doing everything we can to um, get them the supplies they need at a, at a really affordable rate. 
Um, well, before I let you go, I just wanted to bring that slide back up about uh, kind of related to, to what's going on at the moment about this pop up market um, that you're involved with. This is kind of a um, if we can bring that slide up. Um, yeah, that's a great that's a that's a really. Uh, there it is, the was, holiday market. Yeah, that was a last minute like, you know, we put this together quickly, thanks to uh, Uptown Grand Central. And um, uh, basically what happened is uh, she, you know, the people at Uptown Grand Center want to support the local restaurants and, 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 and um, some other uh, artisans, like they make, some people make jams and, and things like that. And uh, we told them, listen, man, we're, we're, we're in it. We're going to do it. We used to do these things before uh, COVID and, 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 and we were like, you know what, you organize it, we'll offer everything for free. We'll make sure uh, we do it in a socially uh, distance uh, responsible, you know, COVID responsible way. And uh, it was a it was a great hit. The people were here for about three hours. Customers were able to just come in, grab and go, get their tree. You know, nobody had to, there was no congregating. It was just really, really special. And the music and, and just the energy was just what, I mean, it really made us feel like it was back in the old days, which was only a year ago. But it was uh, really wonderful. Feels like episode. a lot longer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and that's every Saturday until Christmas, is that right? Uh, actually, until the, December 19th. Okay, great. Um, well, anything else before I let you go, Dimitri? Thank you so much for talking to us today. It was really my pleasure, really. And I thank you very much for including us in your wonderful program. Okay, well, if there's no, no last questions, I will let you, let you go back to your very busy work and say thank you so much. It was so nice talking to you again and, and seeing the holiday shop and everything going on there. Thank you, Amanda. Have a happy holiday. Take care, guys. You too. Take thank you. Team. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um, and just a last thank you to everybody for watching today. I hope you enjoyed uh, visiting the Urban Garden Center and when uh, you get a chance to get, get over there yourself. Um, we do have lots of future tours coming up. You can check out uh, turnstiletours.com uh, for a list of all of our upcoming programs. Uh, here's the slide again uh, of some of the, the uh, more uh, ones that are coming up more recently. Uh, and we have programs uh, all through the end of December uh, scheduled at the moment, and there'll be more, more to come. Uh, so the best thing you can do if you've enjoyed the program is to, to check out our membership, uh, become a member, uh, and keep watching. Uh, so thank you so much again. I hope you have a very happy holidays, and I hope you uh, get gardening. So thank you very much. Bye, everybody.